Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got some information we're going to give you. Now, right now we're using our cell phone to communicate to you, and this way y'all can see just about everything. So any personal information come up on this particular video, people's phone number calling in and all that stuff, then I will delete this and you'll never see it the lie today. Just that simple. Let's go ahead and chit chat for a moment, if y'all don't mind. Uh, and I want to thank those of you who have not been calling, interrupting my day, disrupting my life, on, especially on a Sunday. Y'all are appreciated, except for the people who I give permission to call me on Sundays. See, there's only a select few. The rest of y'all, whoo-wee! Y'all don't have no clue. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people are looking for answers they have a lot of questions. They don't understand why during most of our consults, I go to Google. Why? Well, as I said, Google makes its money off of its accuracy in providing information. That's why they're the largest search engine in the world. That's what they are. They sell information. They sell and market information. Well, don't you all realize we live in an information age, the information era? So anything you need to know, you can find on the internet. Why? Because they've compiled all of that information and compressed it and put it on the internet. That's the issue. Don't you all understand what the 90s were all about? That's what the 90s were all about. They called it the dot-com era. It wasn't the dot-com era. It was the information era. Remember, it was during the 90s that they sought to map out the human genome. Finishing it right about 2021. Do you know how much data and information that was? And so they have been making computers and their microchips and their processing system and their data compression systems smaller and smaller and smaller. Because they realize how much information is out there. Sorry, I'm moving the phone and my phone has got that automatic switch turning and all of that stuff. So you're just going to get dizzy for a moment. All right, getting back to this, ladies and gentlemen, let's say I want to know about, well, like what we're telling everybody about creating securities. All that information is on the Internet from beginning to end. And if you need to know the finite information and you go to the official website of the government. Okay, but the information is there. You don't need to be a rocket scientist anymore. The information is there. You don't need to go and study 85 years in somebody's school to become an expert at something. You hear these people talking about life skills? Well, so many of you have life skills that you don't know what to do with those skills. Okay? Well, you need to start focusing. Because some of you know how to do quite a few things. Now, see, unlike most of you, this is what I made a determination when I was 26 years old, that I'd never work with my hands again. That was my promise to myself. No more mechanics, no more physical anything. And I have stood true to that from that point on. I know that my most powerful weapon is my mind. And I was going to earn a living based on my mind. Now tell me if that's not what I've done. Okay? You all have to know what your most valued commodity is, and you have to exploit that. Now look, there is a television show. It's on HBO. I believe the series is still going on. It's called Silicon Valley. Most of you, some of you have seen it and it threw you off because it just ain't your type of show. Trust me, it ain't my type of show either. But I have made myself watch seven, ep no, eight episodes. Why? Because they're telling you how to start a stupid corporation. Literally, they are telling you how corporations are formed, how to start a corporation and how to start it with basically nothing. Now, they're doing the full corporation, the venture capital, the investors and all of that stuff. But ladies and gentlemen, to start a corporation, you don't even need to do that. Look, I'm going to give you all a hint. Yeah, I can do this because, all right, corporations, many of them went out of business in 2020. 
to 2022. Well, it's been two years since they started going out of business. You have no idea what can be done with those companies that have longevity, have been around for so long and went out of business. Okay? There is so much available there. That's going to be its own industry in and of itself. All right? Now, that's one thing. Then you have this whole issue of, ladies and gentlemen, nobody's paying attention. We're due for another major catastrophe on this planet dealing with health. But nobody's focused on it. So now you get into companies that deal with health. Before the stupid uh, pandemic happened, go back and listen to my videos and see if I did not tell people to invest in mortuaries, sanitation, why? Look at what happened to sanitation. Okay? Look at how mortuaries are raising their prices. Because when there's a lot of death, it's always going to be a sanitation issue, especially when it's a result of a disease. And mortuaries. You just have to think, what will people need if this happens? What will people need if that happens? And you have to provide either the niche or invest in the companies that are providing that niche. It's real simple. Look, our economy, there is no money, but the way things work is participation in the matrix known as the economy. You are looking for as many people to participate in the segment of the economy that you're involved in. That's why they deal with consumers and how many consumers go to Walmart and how many consumers use Amazon and how many consumers go to Burger King. That's how it is. They deal with participation. So, as I said, I've been watching the Silicon Valley series. And I'm only on season two, episode one, but I had to stop it because something was getting ready to happen. It's, it is a corny show. There is a lot of stupid innuendos, but they did that intentionally. Ladies and gentlemen, they are showing you how to begin a business, how to start a company. They're telling you exactly what you need from the board of directors to the uh, articles of incorporation, all of that stuff. But they're putting it in a comedic format. And if you focus and pay attention, you'll see exactly how the game goes, how so-called the industry goes, how they operate. Oh, I'm sorry. The noise you guys hear in the background are the two six inch 12 volt fans that for the most part are running off of backup battery packs. So that will stay going all night. Won't have to plug in no electricity. I let them run off the backup battery packs. They run all night pointing directly at me. Oh, I'm so cool. Oh, cool. What? You guys don't know? C-O-O-L. What's that spell? Cool. Ain't nobody bad like me. Okay. So that's the way I feel in the morning, especially these last couple of mornings. All right. Let's get back to everybody understanding what's going on. Because it's the information era, you also must realize that the Bible prophesied that it would also be the propaganda era. It speaks of the expressions like frogs. Okay, you know how frogs multiply? Because they're guppies, they're tadpoles, and they multiply, just like over in Egypt. Anyway, so these expressions like frogs, the nations would be spreading propaganda. If you don't believe me, go back and look at the news and see how Russia bad, Ukraine good. Excuse me? Russia bad, Ukraine good. Everybody's bad. And they want you to take sides because that's what the government does. What if nobody took sides? Huh? What if everybody did what they said in the army? Stand down! Ever thought about it? What if everybody stood down? What if everybody stopped arguing? What if everybody stopped complaining? What if everybody stopped taking sides? Oh, that would be a perfect world. That's right. That's why that's the one that's promised. But for right now, we got to deal with this one. 
And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are out of work, you just have to take what you know and figure out how to convert that into a business. But it can't be just any business. It can't be a business of you clipping toenails. Okay, that's not that's not a business. So you can't just come up with anything, you drawing pictures and posting them. Now look, if you really, really, really want to get invested in something, there's a ton of things you can do. But you have to figure it out. I can't tell you what to do because I don't know what you're interested in. I don't know what you're capable of. I have no clue. Give me one second. Okay, we're back to recording again. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I don't know what you're good at. I don't know what you're capable of. I don't know what you learned thus far in life. But there are so many people who, for instance, my mother taught my sisters how to braid hair. And so when my mother was a beautician before she became a school teacher's assistant. And so my sister ended up taking that up and she did the hair. She can, in my opinion, she can weave with the best of them. The nails, she can do that with the best of them because she took something that she had learned as a child and she turned it into a business venture. Now, what she's doing with it now, I don't know. You know, she's got so much going on in her life that she either she hates herself so much because I'm hearing that her being drunk a lot. Now, I've only she's only been drunk around me once and never again because she knew that I wouldn't tolerate it. She saw how pissed off that made me. Now, is she a drunk? I have no idea. I haven't spoke to none of them. I think the last time I spoke with her was probably 2010. And that's just one of them. But she took a skill and she made it into a business for herself and did all right. I have uh, another sister. She went to, well, she had done so many things, but eventually she went and she did um, nursing. Well, I have two sisters who are involved in nursing. And as I will say this, most of my family, most of the jobs that they've done is that of helping people one way or the other, assisting people with something they need help with. I can say that none of them, for the most part, has done the selfish thing. Now, and I'm going to talk about family just for a moment. Um, My family, as we've become adults, they become... Well, they're they're strangers because I don't remember my childhood, so I don't really remember them. So they really are strangers to me. I don't know them. I know who they are, know their personalities. I even know their voices and what they've said in the past. That All those memories come to me, but I don't know them. It is like all of you. All of you are strangers to me. I don't know any of you. Seriously, I don't know any of you. So you can't be my friend because I don't know you. There are so many people who want to be my friend. You can't because it's difficult being my friend. Sorry, ask anybody who is my friend. You won't find too many people, but ask them and they'll tell you how difficult it is. Why? Because I'm particular. I'm very particular about many things, not peculiar, but particular. There are certain things I just don't allow, certain things I won't tolerate. And yes, there are certain times that I'm just not in the mood. And yes, you will piss me off and I'll let you know. Now, now look, here's the thing. I've even had a couple of people get attitudes with me. That's fine. I don't mind people having attitudes. It's just you catch an attitude with me and that's, that's the last time you'll ever catch an attitude with me. Because I will leave you standing there with your attitude. That will be the last time. Because I'll have nothing to say to you from that point forward. See, that's my life. I don't avoid conflict by just not talking to people. I avoid conflict by choosing whom I choose to be around and whom I choose not to be around. Because it's my choice. Okay, 
So let me tell you one of the skills that I picked up on. Well, you, you see law. So I can, even when I'm inside the facility, I do motions for people. And they pay me to do motions for them. Pretty good at it. Because sentences get reduced, things get done. They can see the difference once I start writing for them. So I take that and make it into a skill. But that's not my skill. I learned how to lay carpet with my father. And I would lay people's carpet. But that's not my skill. Okay? What is my skill? My skill is thinking. You give me a problem and my skill is coming up with ways to solve that problem. Coming up with different ways to attack a particular issue. Which is what I do during the consults. People tell me what problems they have, and I, I'm the problem solver. I tell them many different ways to solve a problem, not just one way. My only problem was, look, I told a guy, I said, hey, to save your house, they're coming after you. You're already in foreclosure. If they, if this paperwork doesn't work, that's what I told them. Now, I'm going to tell you guys what goes on when people file my paperwork, Okay. I need y'all to give me a second. One of the dogs is uh, barking. Uh, well, not really barking. Oh, that's uh, Penny. Penny, stop. You heard me. I said stop. She hears other dogs barking or she even hears the puppies. She's tied down so she can't get to them. And so that's her punishment for digging underneath my uh, gate. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, with the skills, not just the doing motions, but helping people with their issues, giving them, as I promise people, I give you more than five different options. When you come to me with a problem, I give you more than five different options, and I'll even give you the, uh, what do you call it, the nuclear bomb, and I'll tell you that this is the last resort. So I told the guy, I said, okay. The bank is going to do this. The bank is going to do that. And then they're going to do this. So when you get to a week before foreclosure, you're going to go and you're going to file bankruptcy. It's exactly what I told them. And you're going to file for a fee waiver. Matter of fact, I just did somebody's uh, paperwork for bankruptcy. And after talking with the bank on a the telephone, they postponed his sale. But he was getting ready to do that. I have the case law which shows that the bankruptcy court is part of the district court. The bankruptcy court will tell you they don't have a fee waiver. That's a lie. They do have a fee waiver. They're part of the district court. You just use the district court's fee waiver. The clerk of the court will tell you no. No, you can't do that. The moment the clerk of the court tells you that, then you simply tell the clerk of the court, I'm appealing your decision. And you tell her that they're to send your communication to the presiding judge of the court to make a final decision and determination. There are no filing fees, ladies and gentlemen. You can't pay filing fees. They've already been paid. All of your fees for the court are prepaid. You're even supposed to receive one free copy of any document in that court. Without exception, including certified copies. You don't have to pay for a certified copy. Well, they're telling you that they're, they're charging you a service fee. Doesn't matter if they're charging you a service fee. You've already paid. That's part of their annual budget. So when you do that, the bankruptcy court, when you file it, they have to file it. Even if the court says, no, you have to pay the filing fees, fine. You've already postponed the sale. The moment you file a bankruptcy, it's an automatic stay until the case is dismissed or until the judge says, hey, that stay is lifted. It's an automatic stay, so they have to stop all foreclosure sales. Look, that's their fault. Why? Because the non-judicial foreclosures... The bank gets to send you all kind of paperwork and ignore you're sending them paperwork and then they still get to foreclose on your house. The cards are stacked against you because you can send the bank paperwork, but it's not good enough. They can send you paperwork and the court says, well, is there a contract? So, ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand what I'm about to say because it ain't going to be said any better. Anybody who tries to say it better is putting smoke up something. Ladies and gentlemen so that you get it, because I know that you all don't understand it. 
anybody who used a promissory note to acquire a property, and it is your primary residence, your primary domicile, your primary home, your promissory note, if you deposited it with one of the banks, one of the financial institutions, they are part of the Federal Reserve. So it's the same as depositing it with the Federal Reserve. Once you did that, that was a security deposit. They were supposed to be paid by the Treasury within 90 days. Just that simple. The deed of trust has been satisfied, but none of you are saying that. The deed of trust has been satisfied, but none of you are saying that. So there is no right to sell. There is no right to have a trustee. The deed of trust has been satisfied. You need to provide proof that you did not follow the law. Pay attention now, because I can't put it to you any plainer, because this is what we're going to start doing for our clients along this line. Not exactly this, but along this line. They need to provide proof that they didn't follow the law. Wait a minute. If they provide proof they didn't follow the law, they're, they're admitting their actions are illegal. Ooh, wait, ain't that something? Catch 22, huh? Deed of trust has been satisfied. Ladies and gentlemen, do your own satisfaction of mortgage. Send it to the bank. Let them know this deed of trust has been satisfied. And then file a complaint with the comptroller of the currency regarding that original note and or that refinance. Now, even if it's a refinance, ladies and gentlemen, if it's a refinance, they weren't supposed to pay no other bank. There was That money was supposed to come to you. So now go get your money. Y'all don't understand. Your house was already paid for. So if you refinance, go get your money. That money was supposed to come directly to you. The bank still was supposed to get repaid by the treasury. You weren't supposed to be paying that back out of your pocket. That was a refinance. Go back, pay attention to the act as it was written. That act has not changed. You guys don't understand. When people gave up their gold, they had no other choice but to make it easy for you. You guys want to make it hard on yourself because you think you got to explain all of this stuff to people. You ain't got to explain the law to these idiots. And then to them, that's the law. Technically, it's not the law, but to them, it is the law. So make them go by the law. That's what I do, ladies and gentlemen. I take, and the God that I serve, Jehovah, he helps me. I take their junk, I find all the pieces of their puzzles, and I put them together. And then I throw their puzzle right back at them. But this time I put some spikes and some, you know, bearings and a couple other things in it so that when it hits them, they understand they just got hit. Okay. Like at the end of uh, X-Files and other Fox shows and um, WB shows, the little kid, the voice, I did this. Okay. So uh, I made this, whatever he says, that's was a slogan that I would say all the time. When I played dominoes and would be in those institutions playing dominoes against those wannabes, I call them wannabes because they thought they knew how to play dominoes. And I'm oftentimes making a name for myself on a domino table. See, they have to cheat to beat. I ain't got to cheat you to beat you at dominoes. Why? Because I'm a strategizer. I can set up the whole table, show everybody what I'm doing. I even lay my hand out and let them see what I got and tell them that they can't stop me. I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. Okay? I don't care about being a dominologist. All I know is I play these. And let's just say Puerto Rico, I would always end the game by going, oh, you can, and slapping that thing on the table and knocking everything. Let's just say they all knew it and they couldn't stand it because I embarrassed them. Not embarrassing to the point they want to fight, but embarrassing to the point where they shouldn't have sat at that table. Did that here in every single place they've ever sent me. That's how I play. And then when they start cheating, because yes, they will cheat to beat. When they start cheating, that's when I get up and walk away because it's not fun. It's not fun. See, I want to beat you and I want to beat you badly when you think you're smart and you think you got it going for yourself. But when you start cheating, a lot of people want to beat you when you cheat. I ain't got time for that because if I try to beat you while you're cheating me, then I'm promoting your dishonesty. I can't do that. 
I laid this is what I would tell them all the time because I'm the guy who orchestrated it. I set the whole board up. I tell them exactly how I got it started, how I made him play that. He didn't want to play that bone, but I made him play that bone, which made you play that one, which made you play that one, which lets me play this one. Mother, that's how I did it because dominoes is just a puzzle. It's just strategy. It's just pieces fitting on a puzzle. That's all it is. Well, that's my knack. And I've taken my knack and I've applied it to other things and I've used that to my benefit. Am I the richest man? No, I'm not the richest man. Do I have access? Yes, I do. But I don't choose to have access. I don't follow through on anything. I have so much going for myself, but I just have been taking all of my time spending it towards other people. You don't hear me complaining, though. You don't hear me going, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. I so wish boss would let me sit up there and have two more collard greens on my plate. You don't hear me doing anything like that. All right. Give me a second. Penny is whining, and I got to see why she's whining, because she's not supposed to be whining. There's nothing wrong, Um, but I have to keep an eye because the puppies are there. So I have to make sure she's not whining because somebody's in trouble. I don't like I don't like whining. That's why the puppies don't whine. And that's why I have to stop her because I don't want her teaching her those bad habits. It's like the barking. Don't want it. When the other dogs are barking around here, my dogs don't bark. When she starts, I go out there and we have a little conversation. But she understands, I don't want that barking. Somebody's coming on the property? Yeah, you better let me know they're coming or you're going to be in some trouble. That's how I handle the dogs. Now, mind you, there are several things that I, my father, even though you have some YouTube videos saying that this is the wrong style of thinking, but this is what my mom, my mama, anyway, my father taught me. Learn how to do everything. That way you'll never be out of work. He was right. I've never been out of work. But like I said, when I turn 26, I'm not working with my hands anymore. I'm not working on anybody's cars and I get any oil or grease underneath my hands. I'm not breaking my back anymore. I am not putting my body out for someone else. You're not paying me enough to do this. Minimum, minimum who? I stopped being paid minimum wage when I was, look at that. I just realized that. I stopped being paid minimum wage when I started working for the first time. My first job paid me $3 above minimum wage. The very first job I ever had was $3 above minimum wage. Second job, $2.5 above minimum wage. I didn't order that or anything. It was just, that's what I got paid. I didn't argue with them or nothing. But I guarantee you one thing. I stopped doing that hourly thing. I stopped doing that worrying about getting 15 hours, 20 hours, 40 hours so that I could pay rent. I stopped doing that paycheck to paycheck stuff. And all of you should have that very same mindset. What y'all have got to realize is you have more power over your finances than you could possibly imagine. Give me a second. I have to stop pinning. I apologize for that. She's jealous of Max. Max is sitting up there chewing on something, and she wants it to be hers. Just have to make sure it's still ticking. All right. So Max, she gets jealous of him, but he can't have nothing that she doesn't have. He can't eat first or nothing. She will growl at him. He cannot eat out of the same bowl she's eating out of at the same time she's eating out of it. She will not allow it. And she's in control. She wears the pants in that family, even though Max is the bigger dog. Okay, he acquiesces without missing a beat. So let me get back to explaining to all of you the power that you have. No, I didn't forget. Each one of you can control your own finances, especially all of you sap packers. You just have to get that concept of money out of your head. You just have to understand what money really is. Now, technically, you can create money the same way the banks create money. It's just you have to do it with a little bit more finesse. 
than the banks do. You cannot just out of thin air create dollar bills, but you can create securities. You can write off all of your expenses. There is no law against it. They cannot stop you from writing off your expenses when we just showed you that the government said that these are their obligations. Write that off. Get your tax credits, people. Get your credits and then have the credits on your account. Create instruments to support those credits, to back those credits up so that you can pay off your child support with your credits. Pay off your child support with a promissory note. Ladies and gentlemen, the law told you, I've been showing you the law. March 9, 1933, pay your bills off and then take the fools to court. And ask for a trial by jury so you can explain it to the jury that this is money in the United States. Like I said, we're going to start helping people with mortgages and I will be your legal expert. I will be your witness that will come to court and speak in court. Now, by the way, I'll be putting this video up tonight, but there is another video that I'll be putting up in the morning. I might... Yeah, I might put this video, no, I'll put it up tonight, and then I'll add the description and stuff tomorrow, because the cell phone doesn't keep the description information. So I have to add that when I go online, and I don't feel like turning on the computer right now, so I ain't doing it tonight. I I am, we're getting ready to go into fall. I know it feels like it's still summer, but do you not see the time, the sun, the light, and the middle of the night, how it's getting lighter later? See, it used to be starting to get light at 5 o'clock. That was only a month ago. Now it's getting light at about 6.30 every morning. So we're getting ready. October is the fall season. So we're getting ready to head towards fall. We only have about two more weeks. No, two and a half weeks of winter. This is the 20th. Okay, this is the 31 months. So that's 11 days plus 14. So not two and a half weeks, though. We have 11 days plus 14, oh, 21 days, three weeks. So almost, well, 11 and 14 is 25, so 21. So three weeks, and that's the end of summer. September 14th is usually, well, technically last year it was September 12th. September 14th is usually when winter is not here, fall is here, summer is gone. We might have a couple more weeks that you might have a couple of heat waves between September and October, but basically summer is over. The temperatures are not getting in the areas that get 100. They're not getting into the high 115, 120s. They're not getting into the high 90s in other areas. They're not getting into the high 80s in other areas. So I'm looking forward to it. We might be able to get some work done. But when the season changes, seasons change. Feelings change. It's been so long since I lost you and I just... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Seasons change. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I go through this thing of having little energy when the season is changing. So if you don't see that the weather is changing, that there is a change in the weather, I feel it. I feel it with the energy level because I am up about five o'clock every morning. This morning I went back to sleep at five o'clock, but couldn't stay asleep. So I was up by six and I'm getting ready to go lay down because I'm tired. Been doing a lot of stuff today, but not a lot of stuff that is noticeable. Hey, give y'all an example of something I was able to do for myself. Went They had a food bank. I don't go to the food bank because I don't need it. I got too much food in the house as it is. So I went there so that somebody else could have mine. And I gave it away. But they had some millions, some cantaloupes. And I got a cantaloupe millin right here that I'm going to have to put up on the shelf tomorrow. So I cut it up. And what I did is I cut it up and I put it in a Ziploc bag and I put it in the freezer because I can't eat it otherwise. They've been here for two and a half days, and I haven't touched them. But I ate some fruit cocktail the other day. Uh, Just last night, I ate fruit cocktail. And so I'm a fruit cocktail lover. So I I put, I kept the syrup for the fruit cocktail because this was a, a unique fruit cocktail. This was designer brand. So I kept the syrup that it was in, and I put the cantaloupe in there. 
And so I probably will go and eat me some cantaloupe cocktail in a moment. But I cut up the cantaloupe, put it in a Ziploc bag, large Ziploc bag, because there were five of them. And there are also some yellow melons. And so I put that in there and put it in the freezer so that when I'm ready, I will sit up there and take it out, let it thaw a little bit and have me some ice cold fruit. That's my snack. Uh, I'm only explaining that because that was one of the things that it would have taken me days to do because I just wouldn't have wanted to get, get around, gotten around to it. Let's not say getting around to it. I wouldn't have wanted to have gotten around to it because of the oil and the, not oil, but the uh, syrup getting all over my fingers from the cantaloupe. And so I can't stand that. That little sticky stuff that gets all over the place. But I was able to accomplish it and get it done. And so, yay. Now, with that being said, getting back to all of you, you have a law that none of you use, but the banks use it every single day. Use it to your benefit. Use it until it hurts. Ladies and gentlemen, if you only stop being afraid, if you only believe, if you only stop being afraid, if you only believe, okay, I should be playing that, you know, before I go to sleep, I'm going to play If You Only Believe by the Jacksons. It's from 2100 or 2300 Jackson Street. So I'm going to play If You Only Believe before I go to sleep tonight because I'm in the mood for that song. It is a nice song, although it's an Illuminati song. Yeah, they do all of the Believe songs. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to play it because I like the I like the melody of the song. And Mike's in there a little bit, okay? But I like the melody of the song. So, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is... Follow the act as written and force them to follow the act as written. Stop letting it be a secret. Tell it to your friends, your neighbors, telling them you're going to sound crazy. Oh, that's crazy. That ain't the law. And then you show it to them and say, your mama's crazy. Okay, that's how you do it. Because you make them look stupid. Then you show them how stupid they look by showing them the actual facts. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I've talked too long, for too long, too long, too long. Plus, I'm doing too many videos. That's 38 minutes. So we're going to cut this to a short and let y'all go about y'all day. Thank you for letting me. And y'all has a good evening. How's it going?